Today on the podcast, I'm taking a break from interviews to showcase a true artist and his work that defined a generation and continues to impact not only the performing arts, but our country as a whole. When it comes to the performing arts, and certainly to dance in particular, there are few people more worthy of admiration, of inspiration and imitation than Alvin Ailey. He was both uniquely gifted and qualified to tell the African-American experience which he lived and saw and reacted to through the art of dance. Drawing from his own struggles with self-esteem due to the acts of racial violence so prevalent in his formative years in the South. Alvin Ailey himself, I mean, he he lived through segregation and and the, the things that he choreographed his blood memories or things that he saw. That was Robert Battle, current artistic director of the Alvin Ailey American Dance Theater. Now, if you follow me or the podcast on social media, you know that I am a white man who also grew up in the South. I was certainly witness to and heard tinges of racism growing up, but was fortunately sheltered for the most part from those who held such deep-seated hatred, a bigotry that Ailey knew firsthand. I'm a black person who, who, who's grown up in a company with a country which is intensely racist. Within the theater, we have playwrights and lyricists who can put difficult feelings and hard lessons into words. They show us parts of humanity that can be both glorious and despicable. But theater is not with us right now. The stage is silent. And so in the last few days, in light of the events that led to George Floyd's death and its aftermath, I have looked for and listened to past voices for both understanding and action, comfort and courage. We will not be satisfied until justice rolls down like waters and righteousness like a mighty stream. We will not be satisfied. I'm trying to say something about the beauty of black people, about the elegance, about their ability to entertain, about their intelligence. We're really celebrating human beings and we're trying to make an identification with the black past. One of my most treasured experiences and memories of being here in New York City is getting to watch the Alvin Ailey American Dance concerts each winter and summer. They consist of powerful and moving performances done by amazingly talented dancers. And so it was only natural that my thoughts would go to these stories and emotions told through pieces that Alvin Ailey choreographed himself namely his iconic Revelations, which was inspired by his involvement within the Southern Black Church. In fact, all of his work came forth from the people and places and experiences of his life. And his legacy has been carried on by two artistic directors that came after him. The first, Judith Jameson, a longtime member of his dance company, and after her was choreographer Robert Battle, You'll be hearing from them throughout today's episode, which highlights the story of Ailey's artistic journey and the ways he used dance to change hearts and open minds. I'm Alvin Ailey. I'm a choreographer. I'm a black man whose roots are in the sun and the dirt of the South. My roots are in the blues, in the street people whose lives are full of beauty and misery and pain and hope. My roots are also in the gospel church, the gospel churches of the South where I grew up. Holy blues, peans to joy, anthems 
to the human spirit. Alvin Ailey wanted to celebrate what he couldn't see celebrated, that the image of African Americans, the beauty of it, the enormous talent that was out there was not being seen. He wanted to celebrate our experience, but he also wanted you to know that that's a universal experience. And he did. Well, I started dancing when I was about 18 years old, uh, between high school and college. And there was a wonderful lady at our school who did a wonderful kind of thing that she called modern dance. So I went out and there found a wonderful man named Lester Horton, who was a genius of a choreographer. In the 1920s, 30s, and 40s, Lester Horton developed a modern dance technique based on Native American dances, anatomical studies, and other movement influences. In addition to creating his technique and choreographing a number of works for stage and film, Horton established the Lester Horton Dance Theater in 1946, one of the first permanent theaters dedicated to modern dance in the U.S. He was also among the first choreographers in the U.S. to insist upon racial integration in his company. Alvin Ailey wrote in his 1995 autobiography, what it came down to was that for Lester, his art was much more important than the color of a dancer's skin. Ailey studied with Horton and was a member of his company when Horton died unexpectedly in 1953. Ailey temporarily took over leadership for the next year before moving to New York. And in 1958, he launched the Alvin Ailey American Dance Theater. Horton's technique is the foundation for many of Ailey's masterpieces, including Cry and Revelations. And Horton's legacy also carried on in Ailey's insistence on a racially diverse dance company. I don't have a color policy. I just take dancers, you know. Uh, it's... Uh, it just happens that, that, that it's, it's primarily black at the moment. I guess it always will be, because I'm very involved being black myself with, you know, with what happens to black dancers and what they're doing and all that. You know? So when I see a fine black dancer, I'm much more apt to snatch him or her than I am a... I mean, they all know that. I mean, you know, a white or oriental dancer, simply because I'm so involved with you know, what, you know, what being black is. You know? But we have auditions, and if, and if there are talented people... I mean, Mari has been with me for 10 years and is, as I said, not only my assistant, but a choreographer in her own right, and uh, 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 a married lady with a husband who's also a choreographer, and when she gets a free moment, she's running around dancing with him. So she's a very busy lady. So no, there is no color problem in pop uh, policy. It's just, uh, you know, if, if I find whoever can dance well is in this company, that's it. In the 60s, I had a lot of problems having a mixed company, you know, in the era when it was the the black power thing, you know, and I had white and, and Asian people in my company that were saying, what are you doing with those people in there? Why should you have uh, uh, Japanese people in spirituals and why should you have white people in blues, you know? And I said, listen, man, you know, black people can't sing, uh, you know, can't sing leader and uh, uh, play Moliere and all that, you know, I mean, what is this? He understood people. When we were in a studio, when any dancer was in a, in a studio with him, his ballets were about people. They weren't about trees. They weren't about, you know, the grass. They weren't about the sky. They were about people and everything they could possibly feel looking at that sky or looking at that tree or feeling that pain or that angst or that joy. But he, he was about contributing what it was to really feel everything right here deeply, feel it deeply, not in a superficial way, but be as passionate and committed about what he was giving us and put it on a stage and dance it. He said once that he thinks that the most uh, powerful works of art are usually the ones that are the most personal. In 1971, I made a dance called Cry, dedicated to all black women everywhere. I was fortunate to have one of the most extraordinary young dancers I've ever met, a lady named Judith Jamison, who is now one of the reigning stars in the world of dance. Cry 
Did I know it was dedicated to all black women, especially our mothers, when I did it? No, he didn't tell me all that. For me, he said a couple of words, you know? Mm -hmm. For me, he put a cloth in my hand. I feel like you're carrying the weight of the world here. This is a child. This is a ironing board. This is a, you know, every, every way you can imagine using a cloth, you know, this is a crown on your head, a, a shawl, you know? You're hanging yourself, you're tied behind your back. I mean, he, he was so inventive, so creative, so, so masterful. So that, that probably was one of the hardest dances I've ever had to do besides Master Kalo Langage, which was another brilliant work by uh, Mr. Ailey. Master Kalo Langage was created by Alvin Ailey in 1969. It was a response to apartheid, but it was also looking at Chicago and the Chicago riots and unrest that was happening and making that connection. Well, not all the works are political, but they certainly reflect my feelings about what goes on in this country. I mean, I can't get over that. I'm a black man living in this. If you were dancing and you were African American, my God, did you have a lot to say? Because your, your story wasn't being told. He knew what that truth was about, and he was unafraid to reveal it. All of this is a part of my blood memory. The first performance of Revelations was done in 1960 at the YWHA in New York City. It's been performed in 71 countries on six continents. Revelations, I think, forever will continue to take dance into places that they didn't think they could journey to and take audiences with them. It embraces you, no matter what religion you are, race, color, creed, anything. You sit and you watch that ballet, and then you know what it's like to be human. The notion of art as a weapon for change has has always um, been something that has moved me. No matter what's happening in the world, it's always happening in the world somewhere. And so I think it's easy to be myopic, you know, and sort of just look at your general surroundings and say, look at what's happening to me. I think it's important for us to, at this time, see beyond our circumstances. And in that way, I think we can do that through the arts, you know, that, that we can do that through dance. We are joyous in that we see hope from despair. Always. It is never-ending hope. He always said what he was trying to do is hold a mirror to society so that people could see how beautiful they are. I think that we always need to remember that it is our responsibility to contribute to beauty in the world. Always. This is where the arts really, I think, play a great role uh, in the world. Because often the artifacts of the past or things that we've gone through as a society or a world or whatever it is, is reflected in the music of that time, it reflected in the painting and all of that, that inspire us to go beyond our circumstance. I hope that that is the message, that we celebrate our common humanity. Thank you for joining me today on this episode. I hope you found some insights and inspiration as I did putting it together. Alvin Ailey was a truly magnificent individual with a huge heart and, and enormous talent that came through and not only in the company that he created, but in the works that he choreographed and those that have followed after him in his dance company. Through dance, he shows that we're all in this together. We are one race, we have one human experience, and we must make that equal and just for all. I'm your host, Patrick Oliver Jones, and this is 
why I'll never make it.